earlier we learned that when a rigid body let us say a giant wheel rotates around an axis each particle of the body moves in a circle around the axis with its own radius so you see this point has its radius this one has its radius and so on however each of these particles makes one revolution that is moves through the same angle of 360 degrees in the same time period now you'll agree that if the time period is same and the angle through which they move is also the same they all will have the same angular speed omega because you see omega is nothing but the angle through which a body moves divided by the time it takes to move through that angle however you will notice that farther a particle is from the center the larger the value of the circumference of its circle and so its linear speed v would be higher so let us take another example where we take these two beetles and you can clearly see that this guy needs to move a longer distance in the same time as this one and therefore it needs to have a higher linear speed to cover this distance and if you start pushing this one towards this guy you will see its linear velocity starts increasing and when it is at the same radius as this they both have the same linear velocity now remember both have the same angular velocity no matter where they are on the disk because in any given time interval both move through the same angle so if you've been on a merry go round you will recall that as you move from the center towards the edge your linear velocity increases noticeably and you can actually feel it because it is easier to stay put closer to the center than at the edge of the merry go round even though the angular velocity remains the same at any radial distance and if you're unable to relate to this i would suggest you find a merry go round near your house and take a ride that itself will be a great lesson in rotation for you so with this short discussion you would have realized that it will be useful to relate the linear variables like s v and a for a point in a body that is rotating to their angular cousins theta omega and alpha so if a reference line on a body rotates through an angle theta and we take a point on the body at a radius r from the axis of rotation and say that this point moves a distance s along an arc making an angle theta then we know that s r and theta are related as s is equal to theta r and you can see this is a linear angular relation because this is a linear variable and this angular and if we differentiate it with respect to time keeping r constant we get ds upon dt is equal to d theta upon dt into r but we know that ds upon dt is the magnitude of linear velocity of this point and d theta upon dt is nothing but the angular speed or omega of the rotating body and the point as well so we have another simple relationship that is v is equal to omega r and if you observe this equation it clearly tells us that since the angular speed omega is constant for every point within the body the points that have higher radius r will have greater linear velocity v also remember that the linear velocity is always a tangent to the circular path of a point another take away from this equation is that if omega of the body is constant then the linear speed v of any point within it at a specified radius is also constant in fact all points lying on this radius will have the same velocity and it will be constant because you can see on the right hand side that if omega is fixed and radius r of a point is also fixed then v automatically becomes a constant so while various points add various r values 
would have different velocities but they would be constant also remember that if velocity is a constant it becomes uniform circular motion in fact the name uniform comes from the idea that velocity is uniform then for any such point we can calculate the period of revolution t that is time taken to complete one revolution of 360 degrees as t is equal to 2 pi r upon v and this equation is quite simple that is the time for one revolution is the distance 2 pi r covered in one revolution divided by the speed at which that distance is covered so in a way it is the simplest formula in kinematics that is time is equal to distance upon velocity now if we put omega r in place of v from this equation we get t is equal to 2 pi upon omega again observe that since omega is constant for a body as a whole time period t is also constant for the body and each of its points now let us go ahead and differentiate this equation with respect to time holding r constant and what we get is dv upon dt is equal to d omega upon dt into r or a is equal to alpha r now in this equation what you should be cautious about is that since v is a tangential velocity dv upon dt represents linear acceleration that is a tangent to the path of the point and therefore we call it tangential component at of the linear acceleration and write it as at is equal to alpha r so the other component of linear acceleration is the radial acceleration more commonly known as a centripetal acceleration or ar that equals v square upon r and is directed radially inwards and if you recall the lesson on circular motion this is responsible for the change in the direction of linear velocity v and if you want to refresh this concept i have provided the link in the description below as centripetal force and direction of motion okay now if we substitute for v from this equation we can write this as ar is equal to v square upon r is equal to omega square r so remember for a rotating body the linear acceleration of a point has two components the radial component ar and the tangential component at as an example if you observe a discus thrower you will observe that the discus is experiencing both these accelerations that is the radial as well as the tangential and one very important thing you should remember is that this tangential component will be present only if the body is accelerating linearly that is v is changing with time else it becomes zero because if v is constant there can be no acceleration and you are left with radial acceleration only on the other hand radial acceleration will always be there even if the magnitude of velocity is not changing since it is simply v square upon r and then this diagram seems a lot familiar that is uniform circular motion so you could say that in uniform circular motion where the velocity v is constant this component of linear acceleration would be absent or will be zero so with this understanding of rotation it is a good time to get introduced to the equations of rotation and basically these are all the equations you need to solve any problem that involves constant acceleration also listed alongside are the corresponding linear equations that can help you draw analogy in case of confusion and if you take a moment to pause you can see the striking similarity between both set of equations so omega here is the angular velocity at any given time quite the way you have velocity v at any time in linear motion omega not is the initial angular velocity 
again it is equivalent of v naught or the initial velocity that we consider in linear motion theta naught is the initial angular position of the body equivalent to x naught that we consider in linear motion and finally alpha is the constant angular acceleration equivalent to the constant acceleration a in linear motion so you see when dealing with the problem in rotation whenever you feel confused try to draw an analogy with the variables in linear motion that will bring a lot of clarity and once you're practiced enough you'll find that you will be able to deal with the variables in rotation as easily as you deal with variables in linear motion so i would ideally want you to memorize all these equations if you want to solve a problem real fast but these two should definitely be remembered because you can solve pretty much any question using these two it might just take a little more time so this lesson is a bit conceptual in nature and might take a bit of time to fully understand so i suggest you go through this playlist which will give you a complete picture of the topic of rotation and if you like this lesson do give a thumbs up that will be helpful and i will see you in the next lesson